welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel. This afternoon I want to talk about what is probably one of the most widely recognized and most practiced of all primitive traps, and that is the ubiquitous figure four. And today we're going to use that figure four trigger mechanism in conjunction with a deadfall device, just a heavy weight that falls on an animal and dispatches it, kills the animal. Um, this is probably the most popular way and the way that you've seen most on the internet uh, in pictures or videos to trap animals. In my mind, one of the greatest virtues of the figure four trigger mechanism is it doesn't require any specialized materials to make one, such as the Paiute deadfall, which requires cordage. And of course, we can make cordage off the landscape or carry cordage, but that's a resource we don't have to expend or time we don't have to waste when we want to set up traps quickly with the figure four. So it's very nice for that reason. Also, it doesn't require any special materials, just three uh, sticks and a deadfall device. So just remember, when you go to make a figure four, it's four parts, a deadfall weight that will crush the animal, and then you need three sticks, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. The key thing is you have to consider what species is it that you're gonna target when you set this trap. In any given area, there's gonna be a lot more small animals than there are large animals. So in a true survival situation, it makes sense to go after small game, which I call micro-trapping. Micro-trapping would target things like mice, uh, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, things we might not normally want to eat, but those are animals that are plentiful. Even small birds would be another consideration. There's a lot of those animals in any given space, and so your chances for success are much greater than trying to trap larger animals. So uh, when you go to select a deadfall device, the first consideration is what species am I targeting? And you need to understand that that deadfall device needs to be at least five times heavier than that particular animal. So if I'm trapping a squirrel, I need something that's at least five times the weight of that squirrel to be able to properly dispatch that animal. The worst thing we can do is make him suffer. So we want a heavy enough weight to get that job done as quickly as possible. Whether it's a fallen tree or whether you cut a flat off of a log like I have here, you can use a lot of different things. The key is find something, maybe a flat rock. If you're fortunate to have flat rocks in your area, in my area, we don't really have that. Um, so we have to use logs and fallen trees and things like that. But whatever that material is, you have to make sure it's big enough for the animal to be completely covered by that material. And you have to make sure again that it's at least five times the weight of the target animal or more. And with that information, we can now pick a deadfall, which is really the first step in all of this. Before we ever carve the trap and make the notches and so forth, we have to have the deadfall so we can determine how long and how big that material needs to be. So without further discussion, let's get started and I'll show you how I personally like to set up a figure four. By the way, if I could ask you guys for a quick favor, if you're not currently a subscriber here on the Black Hat Bushcraft channel, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you like this video or this type of topic, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Please know it does help this channel to continue to grow. And I greatly appreciate all of you guys' time, interest, and support. And for those of you that have been subscribed now for some time, please know it means the world. Let's go ahead and get started on setting up this figure four right now. All right, now that we have this device, we can determine how long the sticks need to be to make our figure four trigger. With this smaller uh, material, I'm gonna need shorter sticks. We wanna get a certain angle here from the ground. I see sometimes people set these things up on the internet and it's way too high. The problem with that is it takes time for this device to get back to the ground and squish the animal. And animals are quick. If you think about a rat, uh, you know, squirrel, those guys can move really fast. And so if this thing is not low enough, it's never gonna catch that animal. So you wanna no more than a 45 degree angle and really 35, even 30 degree angle is even faster because it gets to the ground to dispatch the animal quicker. So once we figure out how long the sticks are that we need to get such an angle, now we can collect that material. So just once you got your deadfall device, figure out about that length to the ground and then cut some material that will be appropriate for that. When you do go to cut your material, you're gonna need three sticks. You're gonna need two sticks based on this distance that we've determined here to get our proper angle. And then you're gonna need one stick that's approximately double the length of those two. So you need two the same, which will become your fulcrum and lever stick, and then one extra long, which will become your bait stick, all right? And once we have those materials, we can start constructing our trap. So the first component of this trap that I construct is what I call the fulcrum stick. It's the upright stick that helps support the other parts of the trigger mechanism. 
And I've seen a lot of different ways to carve this particular component. However, just getting on the ground and carving figure four after figure four, I've come to do it this way. This is not something I've learned from any particular person. I've probably compiled some ideas I've seen in other places. But the way I found this easy for me is just to come here on one side of the stick and create a flat all the way down and then rotate the stick 90 degrees and make another flat, as you can see here. And then at the tip, I just create a chisel point, as you can see here. And that's just 50% removing half this side, half this side, and that gives us a nice centered chisel point on the end of this stick. All right, so that's component number one. Component number two is what I call the lever stick. And this works kind of like a lever on that fulcrum stick to help support your actual deadfall. So this piece goes under here like this, and that's the part that levers against the bait stick to hold everything in place. And basically this component is nothing more than a bevel on one side and opposing bevel on the opposite side. Very simple to carve that. And then about one inch, or one and a half inches down from the side that goes under the deadfall device, I just carve a simple number seven notch and create a stock cut and bevel it at a 45 degree angle as you can see here. All right, so a very quick and simple component to carve. These first two pieces are the sticks that are equal in length. The third component, the bait stick, is the long component, the one that's double length, and that you can see here. When I carve my bait stick, I like to use something that's smaller in diameter than the first two pieces. The reason that is, is because this is the part that creates friction and binds the trap together. The larger in diameter this material, the more surface area. The more surface area, the more friction. The more friction, the harder the animal has to push on this bait stick, and the more he has to aggravate this trap for it to set. You really need these micro traps to be very sensitive, very sensitive. And so therefore the smaller material will give you a lighter setting trap. This bait stick just has to be strong enough to bind against and it has to hold bait on the end. Whether we're using a berry or a peanut butter or something like that, we can spear it on the end of this. We can also split this stick a little bit here, pry it open and wedge our bait in and we can tie it on and you can be creative in how to attach the bait just depending on what that bait is. As far as the carving of this stick, it's simply a number seven notch right here at the rear, about a half inch in. And then we have to determine where to make another seven notch here. And that's just on a 90 degree basis. We have the one here and then 90 degrees off to the side, I have my other. And that'll make sense here when we set the trap up. So you can see there's nothing here but making chisels and number seven notches very simple to construct a figure four. All right, so now that we have the deadfall and we've talked about all three of the trap trigger components, let's set this trap up. And the first thing I do is I take my fulcrum stick, which is the one that has the two 90 degree flats here. And I'm gonna take my lever stick, which has this number seven notch here, and then the opposing chisels on each side. We're gonna take that number seven notch and mate it up against this chisel here on the fulcrum, the upright. And now I'm gonna lift up my deadfall device and balance that right here on the edge. And that's critical. You can see that this is right here under the edge of that thing. You don't want this to be way up under there. Sometimes I'll see people set these traps up way up under, and that's you know, most likely gonna fail when the animal gets under there. Your trap components will hinder your trap from functioning. So we get this thing balanced here, right up under the edge of our deadfall device. And I'm gonna check my balance point. You can see I'm just touching that with my thumb and it's balancing well. You can see that this is angled from outside the trap, and that's important. Again, we want these components to fly clear of the trap when the animal triggers it. And if it takes you a minute or two to get your trap set, that's not a bad thing, because that means that you have a very sensitive trap. If it locks together easy and tight, it may, it may want, make you want to question whether your trap's really going to be set off by a small animal. At this point, I'm just taking the bait stick, which has a number seven notch right here on the back corner and it has the 90 degree offset number seven which is going to meet here on this 90 degree there's no opposing notches no number seven no log cabin nothing like that it's just a straight flat all the way down so that thing is going to clamp up there and again it takes a second to get this thing set up just right it can be a little fiddly but there we go all right now this thing is very sensitive and it needs to be because a small animal like a mouse, again, chipmunk or small bird, they, they're great at taking the bait off the end of this thing. 
So it needs to be such that just the lightest little touch here in the back of that trap will set it off. Also want to point out that the bait stick is way up under here. You don't want that bait stick too short. You need the animal to be up under there so that the full weight of this trap can come down on it. If it's right here by the edge, the animal makes one move, he's out from under the trap. So make sure your bait stick's long enough. And then once he touches it, you can see both of these components fly clear of the trap, okay? Now I mentioned before that I like my bait stick to be very small. Here's why. When that trap triggers, that bait stick is gonna be under there. If that's a larger diameter material, that's gonna create more uh, give for the animal underneath. It's gonna help prop this up and, and allow space for the animal to wiggle out. But with this thing being so small in diameter, this is smaller, probably number two pencil or smaller, it's gonna be up under that deadfall, but it's not gonna help support the deadfall in any way, and the animal will be killed clean, which is what we want. All right, so that's the function of the figure four trigger mechanism with the deadfall device. So for those of you who are not familiar with figure fours or haven't had the chance to really make many of them, hopefully this will give you some ideas of how you can make a better figure four. There are many other ways that you can do this and a lot of good methods I'm sure that are out there. This is just what I've come up with from getting on the ground and making them over and over and trying to troubleshoot and figure out how to make it work just a little smoother, be a little faster and take a little less effort to set that trap off for those smaller um, and more plentiful um, animals that we might be trapping in a survival scenario. Um, again, a quick note, use smaller diameter sticks, number two pencil size, a little bit bigger than that for your supports. Use the smallest material you can get away with for the deadfall weight that you're uh, supporting. Again, the bigger the diameter, the more surface area you get when those notches connect. The more surface area, the more friction, the more friction, the harder it is to set that trap off. So in a survival situation, we want every trap we make to count. And so we want to make that thing a hair trigger, give us the best chances of actually catching something when we use this or if we should ever have to use this. Another ratio that I'll throw out for you guys is 10 to 1. For every 10 primitive traps you set, you'll probably catch one animal if you're lucky. All right, so these are something that you'd have to employ in number. If you just put one out, I mean, it's a very minimal chance that you'll catch something, but you set 10 of these things out and you might get one meal out of it. Don't forget also that for whatever species that you're targeting, you need a five times heavier deadfall device to properly dispatch that animal. So go according. I'd say five times or more. Um, the more, the faster you dispatch that animal, the more humane, if we can say this is humane. The last thing I'll leave you guys with, disclaimer, Primitive trapping is illegal almost everywhere. So if you're practicing these techniques, make sure you disable any traps that you set up. And again, only use this in a survival situation where you actually need this for food. All right, I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I thank you so much for your time and your interest, for your support. Again, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button if you didn't earlier. I really appreciate your kind words, your comments. If you have questions, throw them down below and I'll go ahead and answer those as soon as I can. If you're interested in any of the equipment that you see me use in any of my videos, there are links down below in the description box. Amazon, influencer page, my self-reliance outfit, fitters affiliate page uh, teespring links all that stuff's down below and when you do purchase through those links it does help me out with a small percentage of those sales so i greatly again appreciate you guys i hope you're all doing well i look forward to talking to you again very soon with the next video and until that one take care be safe and god bless